Hello and welcome to the second talk in this Digital Twin Talk series looking at interconnected digital twins. I'm Tom Hughes, delivery lead of the Digital Twin Hub, and I'm the facilitator for this talk series. Today I'm introducing Dan Clark. Dan is the Strategy and Partnerships Manager for the Smart Cambridge Program and is employed by Cambridge County Council. The Smart Cambridge Program is funded by the Greater Cambridge Partnership, external grant funding, and industry collaborations. Dan helped set up the Smart Cambridge Programme with the purpose of using new and emerging technology and data to help local councils in and around Cambridge unlock barriers to economic growth such as congestion, energy infrastructure constraints and poor air quality to improve quality of life and move towards zero carbon. Dan talk today is excellent and looks at how they're embedding the Gemini principles at the core of the Smart Cambridge Programme and how digital twins and strong governance can lead to an outcome oriented strategy. Before I hand over to Dan, just a couple of pieces of housekeeping. Um, as with all the digital twin talks, Dan, myself and members from the wider CDBB team will be live on the DT Hub from 10.30 a.m. on Tuesday morning for a live discussion. So please bring your thoughts, questions and challenges to the DT Hub so we can continue the debate. Thanks and over to you, Dan. In today's talk, I'm going to be talking about how we as a local authority are looking at the use of digital twins and the strategies that will underpin that. The Smart Cambridge programme was set up about five years ago to look at how new and emerging technology and data can help both the city and the surrounding area to address some of the very real challenges it has. We're primarily funded by the Greater Cambridge Partnership but we also work very closely with other public sector bodies such as the Cambridge and Peterborough Combined Authority, City and District Councils and other public sector bodies. Cities are very complex things and Cambridge is growing rapidly. There's, it's estimated that there will be 30,000 houses built over the next 10 years, 44,000 jobs created and we know that there already is significant issues with things like congestion. So we've got 65,000 more people who will potentially be driving into the city by 2031. And that will double the amount of time spent in congestion. So we need to get one in four people out of their cars and using more sustainable modes of transport. We know there are issues with air quality that need to be addressed. There are real constraints on the uh, grid around Cambridge. And that's going to have an effect on things like vehicle charging, particularly on the public transport network. So we need to triple the capacity of our energy infrastructure. And then we've got other infrastructure constraints about around water and waste. So we need some way of planning much more holistically to take into account all these different city systems. There's already work going on looking at things like telecoms, so rolling out super fast broadband and mobile infrastructure. Um, as I mentioned, there are constraints on the energy grid and there's a programme looking at how we can increase our energy capacity. We've got waste programmes. We work, work closely with our water colleagues as well to understand the constraints on water infrastructure. And then there's a lot of work going on looking at transport infrastructure. And transport actually isn't just one system. We've got the train system, the bus system, the road network. We've got things like traffic light systems. And very often these things don't talk to each other. And then we've also got things like natural and social infrastructure. And all of this needs to come together to create places that people want to live in. And that's the really important thing. We need to plan much more holistically to create better places to give better quality of life to our residents. And to help with this planning, we've been looking at two types of digital twins. So the first is a dynamic model of an asset. And in this case, the asset could be the city or it could be a city system with input from current performance data from the physical twin via live data flows from sensors and then fed back into the physical twin. And I'll talk about this a bit later, but thinking about the road network, we could manage that in real time, but model it within a digital environment to help us to understand in real time how we can adapt infrastructure to better manage things like congestion. The second type of digital twin is a static strategic planning model 
And as a local authority, we have a number of models, but they tend not to talk to each other. So thinking about how we can begin to bring different systems together in one model, and actually how we can be much more agile in the way that we model city systems. And of course, to underpin that, we need really good data. So thinking about the foundations that we need, the data infrastructure, and things like interoperability. So if we're beginning to bring together city systems as models, how can they talk to each other and exchange data? And underpinning all of this is a strategy. And to develop that strategy, we've been using the uh, Gemini principles de developed by the Centre for Digital Built Britain. So we know that whatever we do must be for public good. And we're really mindful of that. So, you know, what it is, what is it that we're trying to achieve for our residents? What value are we creating? And actually, you know, what insights are we going to get out of this digital twin? What intelligence, what observations, how is it going to help us with our work? It needs to be secure and it needs to be open. And the quality of the data must be at the appropriate level. And we've been doing a lot of work within the authority to look at what data we have, what data we need, and actually how we can begin to fill those gaps, and particularly the data infrastructure that's needed to underpin that. So how do we bring this data together? How do we make it accessible and discoverable by other people? Um, and we have a whole set of principles that we work to, particularly around openness. So open data, open standards, open systems, open APIs, so that it makes it easier for us to work in a much more multi multidisciplinary environment. Federation. So it must be based on a standard connected environment. And we think federation is really important. So when we're thinking about things like new developments within Cambridge, we may have a digital twin of the area, of the built environment, and the areas that we have responsibility for. But we'll want to bring in a digital twin of the water system, a digital twin of the power networks, and begin to connect all these different twins together. And how will we do that? Creation. So actually, clear ownership. Who owns what part of this federated model? How do we govern it? How do we govern the decisions that are made and that come out of it? And how do we regulate it? And then actually, how will it adapt to new technology and as society evolves? And we know that technology changes very quickly and we need to be able to adapt to that. So what is the role of a city digital twin? So some of the issues that we were looking to address was that the models that we have at the moment take a very long time to use. So they're very, very complex. Uh, there's normally a gatekeeper, somebody who operates that model, and it can take weeks for you to get output from it. And that makes uh, very quick scenario modeling difficult. Also, they tend to be siloed. So we're looking at a model that can cut across a number of policy areas that you can do very quick uh, modeling on scenario testing. And what we hope from that is that we'll be able to begin to test much more radical policy options at an early stage. So instead of thinking about a road scheme and thinking, how do we get increased capacity of cars through this scheme? Actually, if we put broadband in, could we reduce the number of cars traveling on that road and not need to expand it? Or, or could we put in light rapid transit or electric scooters to really begin to test out the best way to deliver the aim and the aim being to reduce the amount of traffic and congestion on that road? So we need better digital tools for decision makers. And data is really important to this, so ensuring the quality. And we've started to experiment with that. We built a real-time data platform with the University of Cambridge, and we've been taking real-time data from around the city. And actually what we've discovered is that very often it's not standards-based, so we're attempting to move much more to a standards-based data collection regime. It's very messy. The quality can be variable. Um, there's real-time and static data, which can be very difficult to bring together. We've particularly found that in the bus network. And so there's a lot of work that we need to do to get ready for 
uh, the development of a digital twin and that works continuing at the moment so plug in the gaps ensuring we've got the correct data and we're working to the correct standards and it's not just about data it's also about the analytic layer that sits across that making sure that we have tools that decision makers can use also thinking about you know what skills do people need um, how can we share data across different organizations how can we make sure that's secure what data sharing agreements do we need to put in place how do we engage citizens in this and how can citizens get benefit from the development of digital twins and input into them? And then also, what's the legislative regulatory framework that we need to put over the top of it and how do we manage risk? And that's this new governance model. So as we have different organisations working together, sharing data, what governance layers do we have over that? And as we've seen, governance is really important, um, particularly some of the examples of smart city developments uh, in other countries, such as uh, Toronto, have fallen down because they haven't got the right governance structures to help with things like collecting data and to give people visibility about how data is being collected and used. So we're very early on in this journey. and. We completed two projects, very early stage digital twin projects with the University of Cambridge. The first one was looking at whether we could better model the future of journeys to work in Greater Cambridge. Looking at the prevalence of teleworking, looking at uh, connectivity and actually looking at things like um, EV charging demand and bringing different policy goals together. Within that work, we also looked at the governance structures that would be needed to facilitate it. So it was an outcome orientated digital twin strategy, looking to reduce car use, uh, looking to reduce uh, or mitigate air pollution, and also looking at how we the energy system would need to adapt to support the decarbonisation of the transport system. The first tool that was built was a very lightweight digital twin prototype that took travel information, um, journey to work information, looked at connectivity data and we looked to see how many people within that area could convert to teleworking and actually how could we support that to help reduce congestion within the city. So these aren't very complex models, very early stage, but helping us to develop our approach and then we also looked at future journeys to work, the socio-economic groups, those people who are traveling, the interdependency between infrastructure systems, um, particularly looking at the future of EV charging. In the second phase, we moved on to a much bigger uh, campus or a, a, a kind of a, a more focused approach. And that was looking at the Cambridge Biomedical Campus. And what we wanted this digital twin to do was to explore the potential of linking multiple sources of data to inform policy making on the site. It's a very complex site with a number of hospitals, with businesses, research facilities. It's under pressure, it's growing rapidly. Um, there's congestion on and off the site. There are issues with um, how people travel, where they park, um, how long they stay. And we have some data, but we needed to understand what other data we needed and actually how we can draw intelligence from that data. And then the second part of that work was stakeholder engagement. So questions guided by our phase one findings and looking at things like the need for transparency, uh, community participation in the development of a digital twin and accountability in the governance uh, systems that sit over that. And part of that work was talking to local communities to try and understand how or whether they could potentially use a digital twin um, and what we would need to do to facilitate that. Also, to talk to stakeholders across the, the uh, CBC to understand how they would potentially use a digital twin and help them in their policy making and their planning uh, processes. From those two pieces of work, we're beginning to develop a strategy. 
based around the Gemini principles, looking at things like the data models that we need to develop, data standards, data infrastructure. And then we've got potentially two opportunities to begin to bring this into the real world. And the first is a piece of work that we've just started reviewing our Integrated Highways Management Centre. The Integrated Highways Management Centre manages the uh, road network at the moment, but we want to expand its operation. And actually, we think a digital twin could sit at the heart of that. So a digital representation of the mobility system that will help that team to better manage the network, to be able to run scenarios um, that will help them to address issues such as congestion or potentially to move mobility assets like electric bike share or scooters around the city to better serve the demands and needs of the city. And this will be a federated approach. So it may not just be a digital twin of the road, but also it may be a twin of the signals infrastructure. So we may be able to run scenarios within this model that brings together a road, a twin of the road network and a twin of the signals network to understand how we can adapt our signals infrastructure to better um, address issues of congestion that are building up at that time. We'll also look at things like the curb side and how we can better manage the curb um, and things like the bus network and the rail network and how we begin to federate all these things into a model. And thinking about the data that underpins that, the standards that are needed to support interoperability, things like open APIs, but also how we're going to deal with legacy systems. So it's not going to be a sudden big bang where we replace all the systems we have. This will be evolutionary. And how do we bring existing systems into that? And this will very much be a real time digital twin. The second opportunity is a new quarter of Cambridge that's going to be built over the coming years. And that's at North East Cambridge. Northeast Cambridge will be an opportunity to use innovative new methods of modelling such as digital twins and bringing different systems together and we've embedding that approach in planning policy. So we produced a topic paper which set out how a digital twin could be used and we're looking to integrate that into the area action plan and the need for developers and anyone working on that site to either feed data into or have a digital twin approach. And this will help with both planning the development with its construction and with its operation. But that does come with issues. And that's partly understanding. So when we talk about digital twins on new communities, our planning colleagues think it's just developing a 3D model, but of course it's not. It's about how we bring data into that modeling environment. Ownership and governance, thinking about that from the very beginning. So how are we going to manage this process? What governance uh, structures do we need to help with it? And then data availability and quality and what architecture sits behind that and actually who owns it because we'll have a number of developers, we'll have a number of house builders, a number of people working on the site. So where will that model sit? What will the governance uh, structure be that sits over that so that everybody is comfortable with feeding data into it? Interoperability we've already talked about, so making sure that we can bring these models together. But the key to this will be demonstrating value. So how do we demonstrate to all the different people involved in this development that they will get value out of it because they won't invest in it and they won't use the digital twin approach unless we can demonstrate value and skills. So we really need to upskill people so that they can begin to use these digital tools and get value out of them. And this is likely to be both static and real time. So there'll be a real time element, particularly around construction and operation, but you know, during the planning process, it may very well be a static digital twin. So those are some of the challenges and some of the opportunities that we as a local authority are facing when we come to deploy digital twins. And we're building out the strategy now, and we're really keen to work and hear from other partners who may be able to help us to develop both the strategy and our approach to digital twins. I hope you found this interesting. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.